folks. I hope you're all here for the right program. This is uh, the Q&A, the Speakeasy Cafe after Dove Flyer. Fantastic movie. Um, I'm always left a little shaken up, so I'm glad we had a moment to breathe before we had to jump into the Q&A. Um, I'm just going to let the last few people get in here so we can close the curtains in the back for sound. Okay, it gives me great honor to introduce here um, uh, I th what I think will be an amazing talk back, not to set the bar too high. Um, I'm going to start with our moderator, Ruby Namdar, our friend. Thank you for being here, Ruby. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to then jump over to um, Menasha Noy, who you all recognize from the film. And I mentioned to Menasha um, that hanging scene at the end. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the way he developed his character to be so likable that it just breaks my heart. But, uh, and how he, he walks there with pride. I'm, I'm just filled with chills every time I see that. Um, but Menasha Noy, we're so glad to have you here. And you will recognize her as well from the screen, but uh, beyond her work on the screen, she's also the actual creator and the person who made this film happen. Um, Ahuva Karen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Ruby, I'm going to hand things over to you. Okay, thank you. So, here. Thank you all for coming. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here and to um, uh, moderate this event. Um, I, um, I must say that I, um, I watched the film very uh, closely. I think it's, it's, first of all, it's just an incredible work of cinematography, but it has so many more layers of meaning for me as an Israeli, for me as an Israeli of Middle Eastern descent. Uh, and some of them I would like to... Um, I would like to evoke tonight in our conversation and uh, explore a little bit of the of the motivations and the ideas that are also uh, behind the scenes and under the surface of this very good and very uh, a captivating film. So we have um, we have the, the the privilege of uh, sitting with uh, with two people who are some of the creative. Uh, a, force behind the film. I want to just, for those who are not aware of the fact, this film is based on a very famous and important novel by the Israeli author of Iraqi descent called Eli Amir, who, by the way, uh, it's, uh, has a minor role. Yeah, uh, he has a minor role in the film and he plays it mar marvelously well. And uh, so that's a cute little uh, stick there that he appears as one of the... And I'll let you all... He's the beautiful woman with the blue eyes, of course. No. <laughs> Rachel. That's Eli Amir. No. Uh, he's the, the schoolmaster, the headmaster with a very cool gray suit. A very, uh, so that's Eli Amir. A very important, a very um, a, a well, well appreciated writer in Israel of Iraqi descent. Um, we have here with us um, the, the director of the film, unfortunately, is not here with us, Nisim Dayan, who I, I think did really a marvelous job. This is a wonderfully directed film. Director and, and script player. Ah, he's also, he also wrote the script. Yes. But we also have here a, a new category, a new creative category, the creator of the film. So I would like to ask the creator of the film, Ahuva, and then Menashe, about your... The creator is Ahuva. The creator. Yeah, the honor, yeah. She is the great, great creator. Thank about you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want you to explain to us what it means to be a creator of such a film and what went into this process and what, how did this wonderful work of, of art come to be? Okay, because I'm used to this question and it's uh, very important for me to be precise on this question, I wrote it. With your permission, I will read it because I'm very, very excited. So please understand me. Thank you. The age. 
Stop I'm not young, as you see. Not stop, at all. Stop fishing for compliments. <laughs> I am a woman. <laughs> well, I was born in Jerusalem, not in Baghdad. But my soul is maybe in Baghdad. Into an uh, Iraqi immigrant family. I have always been fascinated by the rich in, richness of the Iraqi language and its met metaphor. For example, if you want to ask someone, simple question, how are you? In Iraqi, you would say, Ashlonak, Ashlonkum, Akwa Uoni Arakin, Ib Dalkum, Timhorn, Imlih. Well, ash mean what? Lon means shed of color. So literally, you are asking him, what color are you today? <laughs> yes? So, and many times, they answer you, in the Iraqi, Faham, <coughs> which means call, or Soda Musbura, blacker than, than black. <laughs> it's not beautiful. You ask a person, how are you? And he tell, and he tell you the, the exact color that he is mm -hmm. in that moment. It's beautiful. As an actress and, and creator, I was curious to find the connection to my native language, because language for me is much more than communication through meaning. meaning. The sound of the language reflects the interior sound of the human being for me. Language is identity, and I think all this festival, the, the main question of this festival, festival is identity. When a person lives without identity, I'm not jealous with, with his life at all. So language is identity, language is native land, language is sensation. It is touch, it is smell, taste, it is feeling of warm, it is uh, it's love. This feeling was a huge journey for me as a creator of the, of the idea to make this film, as a translator, Hebrew Iraqi, as a teacher. I actually had to teach most of the actors Iraqi. Most of them, they, does, they didn't know even one word. For example, my Iraqi, Menashe Noy. <laughs> the Iraqi language has two dialects, Muslim and Jewish. I have never taught language, certainly not my tongue mother, not my mother tongue. And the truth is that I cannot read or write Arabic, unfortunately. So the only way to teach the text was to write it in Hebrew letters. I recorded myself, and most of the actors had to wear headphones and listen to my voice. What can I do? Months before the shooting, in order to be able to speak and act in a foreign language, which it's, believe me, it's not a simple task. And I want to thank God for the greatest gift of all, imagination. With the help of images, I was able to communicate the music, the rhythm, the intonation of the language in the most precise and the vivid way. And you see the example, how he acts in the language that he didn't know before. And if he wants to say now something about it, please. Yeah. <coughs> Tell us about your personal angle with this film and the process that you went to, Menashe. In the, in the, um, 
about the language issue. Language issue and in general, your relationship to this work. Yeah. Um, I was born in Tel Aviv um, to a family that in the side of my mother, they left Baghdad in 42. My grandfather, um, Menachem Chai, uh, he left Baghdad in 42 immediately after uh, the, what we call Farhud. That was the activities of the uh, Iraqi government and the people against Jews in, for, in Shavuot 41. And Shavuot, the... Yeah, yeah, pogrom. pogrom yeah. A pogrom. Um, and uh, my f mother's family, uh, they uh, um, uh, they were uh, uh, the, the the pogrom, the farhud. Uh, that was the something that they uh, uh, they were. I, I, let's say not victims, but but they they, they, uh, they um, fell it on their uh, they on their, uh, their exp experience um, that people come to their houses, and my grandfather has to uh, run away with the children, and all of that, and there he uh, got a decision to close his business and uh, to move to uh, Palestine. Um, I don't know the, the, the um, mistake, let's say, that my uh, grandfather did uh, was that uh, he decided that uh, when he uh, and the family arrived to Tel Aviv, uh, my grandfather decided that, okay, now is a new creation uh, of the Jewish people, and he told to his uh, uh, children not to speak uh, Arabic, and they decide to start, he decide for them to speak Hebrew. That's the reason that I heard the language uh, when I was a child, as uh, um, I heard the language from uh, my grandfather and my grandmother. My parents, they talk uh, a little bit. Um, so I only heard the, the language, I never uh, use it. So when uh, Nisim Dayan offered me the uh, role, I told him, look, I don't know the language. It's only okay. You are Iraqi, it will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it was a, a good opportunity to uh, close this corner um, because uh, I knew all what, what uh, uh, Ahuva uh, talked about. There was a lot of uh, uh, um, words and... Uh, um, uh, drawing uh, sentences and things like that. Um, and then, okay, I start to learn. Ahuva was my first uh, uh, teacher, and uh, she was uh, very tough with me. Um, first of all, she made a very good job. You can see all these youngers that they uh, never uh, spoke this language, how they spoke in the movie. but. Because I, uh, I thought my, myself, I look myself as a very good imitator. I know how to uh, imitate French uh, um, accents and uh, a lot of accents. Then, uh, uh, and, I, I, and I thought for myself it will be, that it would be easy. Uh, Aouba told me, no, 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 you're wrong. Because every word bec there is in Iraqi, and you, uh, most of you uh, know that, uh, there is a lot of uh, a K, Qa, K, Qa, and R is A, Ra, Ra, Ra and, uh, and in the same sentence you move, uh, my mother used to know it. So it wasn't easy because I understood that there is uh, something of my muscles, I never used them. <laughs> and uh, then uh, there was another problem because Aouva has a lot of uh, 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 pupils. Uh, they moved me to another uh, teacher, Mr. Khalutsi, the one that he was the secretary, the, the played the role of the secretary of uh, Nouri Said. Uh, 
And uh -huh. uh, he came from uh, uh, Mosul. So uh, he taught me in the Mosul uh, 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 dialect, uh -huh. Jewish, Iraqi, Mosul dialect. <laughs> and then when I uh, uh, act with Ahuva, she told me, no, you, you say that because there is a Baghdadian Jewish dialect. <laughs> There's one example like a, a, a family. Ayla. And he told me, Ila. Ayla. Ayla. <laughs> I see. And he told me, Ila. Ila, Ila. No, Ayla, Ayla. So then there was the, uh, that was the opportunity to go to my father. And my father, he is Baghdadian, and so I trust him that he will give me the right action. And so I, it was a very good opportunity for us to, uh, for me, to give him the duty to teach me the Iraqi accent. That was my experience. I want to ask another question about the language. And I think for, for Israelis, uh, the Israeli ear, this is a very loaded subject. It is not an innocent choice to just, to, to do an entire Israeli Jewish film in Arabic. It is a very loaded choice not just because of the conflict in the Middle East that unfortunately you know, is very present in everybody's life, but also because of the politics of culture and language within the Jewish society in Israel. This is, I would call the choice to make a whole film in Iraqi Arabic a very subversive, a very kind of political choice, not just artistic. Do you view it as such? What are your thoughts about this? If I want to use a, a metaphor to language, language for me, it's like a, a type, a blood, it's like a blood type. If you give a person who needs a, to make a surgery and you give him another <coughs> blood type, you can kill him. If we would do that flyer with the Hebrew language, there, it, it wasn't this film that you saw. Because the blood who exists in this movie, this is the blood of the soul of the Jewry communi uh, Jew uh, Jewish uh, community. This is my answer. And I can give you some uh, uh, response that I had when the uh, Duff Flyer uh, come out on the messages of the Facebook. Thank you for doing this movie because I stop be shame when my mother talk with me Iraqi and at the street, for example. Thank you for this movie because now I know that we had history. We didn't come from nowhere. This is political, yes, yes very because much so. this story, if you, f if you open the, the book history, you can find maybe one chapter, two chapters about Iraqi Jewry, uh, Jewish uh, uh, Iraqi. No more. Then we learn about the Varsha pogrom, about all the things which I really, really think that we have, that we that must learn. But all the story of the people who came from Syria, Paris, Iraq, Morocco, actually wrote by writer. We know the history of those, peop of those people from the uh, writer. We didn't know it from, uh, we didn't learn it actually, at the, at, the, at, the, at the school, because somebody decides that it's not so important. So it is political, yes. And many times, when, when people come to me and say, but, but why, in, in, why, why in Jewish uh, Iraqi? Why? Why it's not Hebrew? And they say, I can't, I, I can't give you the answer. Why when you see a movie with... Uh, French movie, you don't ask the, the, this question. This movie talking about the exodus of 
the oldest commun community who exists in the world. And they know only Hebrew, only Iraqi Jewish. So why they shouldn't talk? But unfortunately, in our country, when they hear something who belong to Arabic language, something uh, they feel like they are, you are against him. Therefore, we are here in other film festival, and I'm glad to be in the other film festival. Menashe. <laughs> Menashe, you are a very well-known, respected actor, comedian, a, 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 a really household figure. Is this for you also a political statement? Is this for you a loaded subject, the subject of Arabic? Look, I, I, um, I think about what Aouva said, and Aouva uh, uh, expressed it very emotionally. Um, I can say that um, there is a problem in Israel um, that, um, let's, uh, let's say, when my father uh, arrived to uh, Israel uh, in 51, uh, uh, his brother, uh, my father is Victor, and his is uh, uh, no. I'm sorry. My father is uh, uh, from uh, uh, from uh, when he was born. His name was uh, Victor Nawi. And when he arrived to Israel in '51, his brother was uh, in Israel. He came alone before, and his name was Edward. Now we, but he was an engineer in uh, the Israeli administration, and he told to my father, "No more now we. From now on, you are Noi." No. And um, after I believe, I think uh, two years, three years, my uh, uncle Edward, that now he lives in New Jersey, <laughs> <laughs> he left. Uh, yeah, he said, "Okay, I, I got the point." <laughs> Uh, and he uh, moved to uh, America, and his name is Edward Nawi. Uh -huh. he and here you are, back stuck to with the Nawi. And it is very interesting, because why he changed it back to Nawi, and in Israel he was... N why he was Nawi, I understand, because Ben-Gurion said, oh, now we are Israelis. But when he came here, he is Nawi. So this is the, the, the main, I think, that... I never felt. I, I never feel that. Uh, I never felt that I'm ashamed about my culture. I uh, uh, lived in the middle of Tel Aviv, in a very Western, Western, uh, let's say Western uh, orientation uh, culture of uh, Israel. And I never sure our house was Iraqi. Uh, with the food uh, and the, the culture. Uh, my uh, grandfather, he was one of the, uh, the, uh, the Iraqis that built the synagogue, uh, um, uh, Binyamin Shamash, the uh, synagogue of the Iraqi Jewish. And we were a little uh, uh, um, traditional Jews. And uh, my uh, grandfather was uh, really uh, um, uh, religious. So. We, we were uh, in the same atmosphere, but the problem is that the language or the culture of the uh, uh, Eastern Jews is the language of the enemy. Uh -huh. The language of the enemy, the culture of the enemy. And that's the, uh, the problem, the main problem, that you have to hide it because if you speak like, uh, in Iraqi, you speak like the Palestinians or like the Arabs. So there is very um, psychological problem because first of all, you uh, don't want the Israeli to think about you like you are, uh, you are like the enemy. And that's what, what uh, makes you forgot your uh, very deep 
a connection with your history, with your stories, with your language. And I believe that according to the last 20 years, that something changed in the Israeli uh, society, that it's in the beginning, uh, it became more open. And there is lots of uh, uh, Eastern Jews filmed uh, in Moroccan a little bit, Moroccan French, and things like that. But the main problem that, uh, and maybe uh, Ahuva can uh, or correct me or not, that the, the strange thing is that why you speak Iraqi? Is something not okay with the Hebrew? Because the Israeli uh, society, uh, uh, establishment, the whole time, something is wrong with what we gave you, and that is the way. And, and I believe that this film is uh, 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 under uh, political uh, purposes that sound, hear the, 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 the language, not afraid of it, enjoy of it. It's on, it can uh, uh, give to the uh, uh, Israeli society, to the Israeli culture, more colors and more music and things like that. Beautiful. This is the winning of Ayahuva, I must say. Yes. Um, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. People are very interested in many aspects of the film. And because our time is limited, we would welcome now a, a questions from the audience. Where was it filmed? Please. Where was it filmed? Where was it filmed? At Akko, Jerusalem, Jaffa, Abu Ghosh, Nazareth, and I must say about we shoot at Nazareth two weeks. And I want to say something very important about the relationship that we had about with uh, uh, Israel, uh, uh, Arabic Israeli. The, the, the Shituf the Peula, the collaboration between us, it's, uh, it was fantastic. It was really, really fantastic. I wish we can, we can could take this pattern and to put it to all the all the all the country and maybe all the all our country could be really uh, like like uh, like the flyer we can fly um this movie takes place at the end of the iraqi community in iraq yeah prior to that sami michael writes a lot about the Iraqi Jewish community and how they lived with their Arab neighbors really in cooperation. They, they were in the Communist Party together. And when he finally leaves Iraq, he's really shocked because his Iraqi friends who were his brothers to him all of his life, all of a sudden become not his brothers. But there was this very long period in Iraq where Iraqi Jews lived side by side of with their Arab neighbors. And the, I love the book and I love the film, but one of the things you don't get from that is this sense of community and intermixing between Iraqi Jews and Iraqi Arabs. Do you think that that's <coughs> one of the things that's missing from this film? Uh, I think Naima, the play that I roll express it very well. Iraq is her land, motherland. She can't understand why she, what, why she has to get, to get out. My mother, she, 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 doesn't, uh, she didn't understand why she, has, uh, what, why, why, she, why she should leave it. And I want to tell you something very, very may, maybe strong. If uh, uh, Israel wouldn't uh, uh, receive independence, independent. <coughs> the Jewish community can live together with the, with the Iraqi till now. The problem became when Israel declared here independent. Then the problem really, really started. But before, 
My mother, all the time, when, 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 when she wants to say something wrong about the, uh, a person, she says, he worse than the Muslim. This is what he said. But but it's but uh, listen listen it it was for hood but, but most of the time most of the time the Jewish lived together with the Muslim like brother <coughs> and if somebody want to tell you something else okay, it's uh, the magamati okay. uh, okay friends friends we have we are. We all know our own opinions. Okay. Let's listen to our guests and see this their This is a problem when it's not written on the history, you see? The, uh, um, this is a problem. We're going to take a comment here. I will just stand a minute because for me, it was the most, most moving experience of my life. I was eight years old. I came to Ahuva. I was crying and hugging her. It's just unbelievable, this movie. And I kept telling my American husband right here, that's exactly how it was. I was eight years old, and I remember everything. My brother Abdallah Ovadia was in prison. My uncle Yecheskel was in prison. I went with my mom to visit them in the prison. I can't thank Ahuva enough because for me, you closed a big circle and I was never ashamed that I'm an Iraqi Jew. I became an Arabic teacher right <coughs> in Israel. I studied Arabic right in the US and I was the only one teaching Arabic in a Jewish high school, Solomon Schechter Day School in West Orange, New Jersey. Thank you all. Uh, okay. Please. Look, this uh, story about the Fahud, um, I heard this story when I was 16 from my grandmother. And I remember that this was a, a, a story that he was very... Um, that when my, ma my grandmother told me the story of the Fahud, I immediately understood that she told me something very important. But then when I uh, um, uh, investigate uh, and learn more, I understood that the, the situation of the Farhud was very uh, uh, complicated because it's not a, a violence of the Muslims against, against Jews. Uh, it, it's also something that happened with the British, uh, the British mandate and things like that, and all the uh, political uh, moves in the Middle East. The, the important thing that, um, you know, in the end of the movie, there, in the, the film, there is a title uh, the community of two uh, of uh, 2,500 years uh, community uh, end, and when you think about that, you said, "Look, the Iraqi people is a um, community that uh, they are there in Baghdad or Basra. They are in Iraq from the first destruction of the temple." They uh, didn't come back with Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah. And all the time, I, I, in a sense of humor, I said, look, the Iraqis, they stay in the same place 2,000, uh, uh, 2,500 years. And all the problems uh, move through them. And they didn't move all, uh, they didn't uh, move to Europe and back and things like that. That's first. Second, I know according to my family that uh, the Iraqi Jews has a uh, lot of, uh, um, let's say, um, activities in Bombay, Singapore, uh, very um, involved in economics and political, in high political, in, in, in the area very involved in the, in the Iraqi culture. Uh, there is now a, um, a music of uh, the Kuwaiti's brothers that very popular in Tel Aviv, uh, in Israel. 
and uh, the story of the El Quetis. And so you heard that how uh, the Iraqi community was a very rich community, cultural, economical, political. Another thing, I heard a story from my uh, uh, grandmother that my grandfather, he came to Israel, to Palestine in 42 by cab. My grandmother with her child came in 43 in cab. So, Style. and they told me that it by taxi. And so they told me it's very popular was that you left Baghdad 36 hours with taxi. You arrived to Jerusalem to get cure in Dr. Tijo uh, clinic, uh, and then back to, t to Baghdad. So I, I believe that this is the shock, this is the trauma, that my mother, for instance, came as a child to the same neighborhood. She, she moved in the same neighborhood to, uh, to the same, in this, she, she changed neighborhood from, let's say, from Manhattan to Philadelphia. <laughs> and then somebody told her to hate Somebody told me this is uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, and, uh, and to hate the to hate them uh, herself or to uh, um, uh, to deny all these uh, things that she learned and sh that she has to change herself. And I I believe that it's even uh, influenced my personality. Um, this is the main, uh, uh, let's say, um, schizophrenic of the uh, Eastern Jews in Israel. And that's the thing that we have to understand, and we have to cure, and we have to close this uh, uh, story. I must add a fact uh, about the Farhud. It's very important to know that uh, many uh, Jews uh, uh, have uh, had uh, saved by Muslims. Yeah. yeah. This is fact that we have to know. Yes. Many, yes. Nahon? Yes. Many Muslims just saved their life of the Jewish. Many times as this they do. Mea Shivim 179. Okay, okay, I, I know. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm not, I, 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 this is the fact, and this fact also. That's all. We have a question over here. Okay. Th this relates to th this discussion. I assume for political reasons the movie hasn't been shown in Arab countries, but do you have any sense of the reception of the movie among Arab Israelis? Was there, uh, I, among Arabic speakers in Israel? Is there any sense of that? I, I don't have the answer. Yes, I have the answer. I can't give you the answer because I don't know. I'm sorry. Ahuva, I want to say that you made that film amazing because I was 12. It's not when only I, me I meant. Yeah, but this is my idea. The way you spoke, I was 12 when I left Baghdad. But I have a question for you. Um, the synagogue, the, the one that was the attack yeah. that took place, there's rumors that it was done by the Tnoah. Was, did you research that? My love, it's not rumor, it's fact. It's Hamosat put the bomb in the synagogue. This is the fact. I think you need to explain this because this is something that is not yeah, the, well there known. Is a, uh, there is a, um, the, the, the Jewish Arab talk that I heard it from my father, that that was uh, by the uh, Zionist government to m <laughs> move the, the, the Iraqi that want to stay there. They Look, my grandfather, the my grandfather from my father's side, he was very close to the uh, Iraqi government. He was a businessman, and he stayed in Baghdad till 63. This guy that uh, played the role of uh, uh, Zilcha, lawyer, in this movie, he's one of my family, and he stayed in Baghdad till the 70s. Till it, 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 they left, uh, in, uh, he told me, they left in, in 1970, they ran away to Turkey, 
And of course, they suffer from Saddam Hussein government. This is the, this is the problematic situation. About the bomb, I can tell you the story when the, when the uh, Duff flyer uh, show up. Uh, a person called to me and he said, please help me. I am uh, uh, about 61 years old, and my father died in this bomb when I was in the in the uh, Shilimi. When I was in my mother's womb. Yes. And uh, my father was one of them. I try many ways that is that the uh, uh, Israel uh, uh, accepted and uh, uh, and uh, take uh, responsibility about it. I went to Ben Porat. I went to Hillel, and all of them just dropped me in there. Nobody want to listen to me. Can you please help me? I don't want money. I don't want nothing. I just want justice. Because one of them was my father. So, yeah. this is a story. People, we don't know many facts. This is a problem of all the things. We didn't know the real facts. What really happened, what happened today. This is a problem. We have to see the details in the fact. Thank you for a very beautiful film. I'm interested in talking more about the politics of the film. I take your points that this is subversive linguistically that showing the Iraqi cultural roots of, the, of Israeli society is a really important thing to do for Israeli society. But I was wondering if there are discussions about some other opportunities that might have been taken to be subversive in a different way. That, and I would agree with the woman who asked her question here before, that uh, non-Jewish Iraqi society seems to come off a little bit monolithic for me. And the non-Jewish Iraqis don't come off particularly well in this movie. And I'm just wondering if you gave thought to the fact that maybe the movie portrays the Iraqi Jewish community in a way that's already selected out. That it, there's already a sort of narrative attached to them that's, I mean, that's Zionistic, that's attaching them towards Jewish-Israeli society and away from the Iraqi society in which they are so deeply ingrained. So I'm just wondering if you had discussions about sort of whether or not to push against the political uh, biases we know so well in that direction. Thank you. Okay. First we have... Uh, no, for example, the lawyer, uh, Karim Abdul Haq, he is Muslim. And he talk in the dialect Muslim. I don't know if you notice about it. For example. <laughs> and uh, actually we did a film about a, f a Jewish family. So, and what's around. So this is what, uh, it's not uh, 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 on the purpose, not at all. I have a question to that effect. That beautiful singer that the father was in love with, is she Jewish or Muslim? I think, yes, yeah. Salima, Salima, Salima. Salima Pasha, Salima, she was a Jewish. She, she was Jewish. a Jewish singer? Yes. I don't yes. remember, there was uh, she, uh, Laila Morad. Laila Morat, Salima Pasha was a Jewish. I think, yeah. And the, the bar, the place where the men hung out, was it a Jewish cafe? No, or no. Was Muslim. It a no, Abu Saadon is Abu not Saadon, a... Muslim. Muslim. So this, there, is, there is a presence of non-Jewish. Uh, we just can't tell the difference, but uh, to Ahuva's ear, of course, can't you hear his language? You don't know he's a Muslim. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> Abu Saddam, for example, he said that he best friend of Salman, the, the, who play uh, my uh, husband. Yeah. Talk about it. Folks, uh, there are a lot more questions and a lot more to talk about, um, but we, we've run out of time. Um, I want to thank our panelists here. <laughs> Ruby, thank you. Ahuva, Menashe, thank you so much. Menashe is going to be back with us tomorrow night for um, Sweets, our closing night film that he's in as well. Um, there are about five tickets left, so grab them while you can. And we look forward to seeing you at other films. Thank you very much.